The U.S. House of Representatives still in a deadlock, trying to select a new speaker for the session. Some Republicans show no signs of budging to get a candidate to 218 votes. And joining us on KVU right now is Democratic Congressman Lloyd Doggett from Austin. Congressman, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Thank you, Quita. All right, so you have to break down exactly what's happening for us. Why are we seeing such a stalemate? Well, uh, we basically have had a shutdown of the legislative branch, not unlike the uh, shutdowns of government we've had previously. Uh, it is a battle between two factions within the Republican caucus. They have the majority slightly to run the Congress, but instead they're fighting with each other, the kind of far right and the not so right. Uh, we've now had six votes with essentially the same result every time spread out over two days. Uh, we will be in this evening for additional votes. Uh, I think it's time for uh, Mr. McCarthy, the minority leader, to step aside. He can't command the 218 vote majority required, uh, but he's not done that yet. Uh, my main concern is how this affects our business in Congress. We're going to have a Republican speaker eventually, but it does uh, create great warning signs uh, that uh, we could see the entire government shut down later in the year, uh, as happened under Republican rule once before, and that would be very damaging to our economy and especially to all the people that are counting uh, on uh, as federal contractors or federal employees uh, to be paid regularly. Well, Congressman, is there any sort of precedent for what happens if McCarthy doesn't step aside and if a nominee just can't get a simple majority? Well, it's uh, been a full century, 1923. Republicans were fighting each other then. It took multiple ballots before they finally got it resolved. But it takes a majority to uh, get anything done here. We're operating without any rules for this Congress because those haven't been adopted yet. The new members uh, have not even been sworn in yet, so they're not, they're still Congress members elect. Uh, this process that has occurred this week may seem very inside baseball to people, but it has an effect when you shut down the congressional branch, and that's what's happened. Uh, I hope that uh, we will see things change, though the latest thing tonight is one of my colleagues from Colorado, a Republican, suggesting that uh, they need to nominate Donald Trump to be the Speaker of the House, and I can assure you uh, that will lead to even more chaos than the uh, very awful situation we have here now. Well, what kind of conversations are happening on the Democratic side? Is this just a wait and see situation for y'all? To some extent it is. We have 212 uh, Democratic members. We have all supported our minority leader, Hakeem Jeffries, who's taken over from Nancy Pelosi. Uh, that's been true in all the votes. But on the Republican side, there are at least 20 members who have rejected their leader and demanded an alternative. Uh, and it's just a question of how much longer the government is shut down here uh, in order to let them resolve that controversy. And uh, uh, as I say, uh, I think we end up with a Republican speaker, though I'd like to have one who's a little more open to coming together and bipartisan solutions to things. But if we uh, have someone uh, of more strident stripe, uh, let's get it done and get it done soon so we can move on to attend the legislative needs of people all over the country. Now, Congressman, I know you've spent a lot of time in D.C., many years, and you've seen a lot of political battles up there on Capitol Hill, but have you ever seen such a divisive attempt to pick a speaker? This is truly a first. Uh, in this century, it is a first. 1923 and before that in the 1850s was the last time there was a battle like this. So I think it's an unfortunate first because we need to be putting the people's business first and there are any number of challenges here at home and abroad that this Congress needs to address. I'd like to see us get, get about business and wherever possible to do it in a bipartisan way. And finally, Congressman Doggett, looking ahead, what are your big goals for the session once a speaker is finally chosen and lawmakers can get to work? Well, I continue serving on the health uh, subcommittee. I've chaired it over the last couple of years, uh, and I'd like to see us do more to address the uh, rising cost of prescription drugs, 
uh, and the uh, challenges that many families in Texas with so many uninsured families continue to have in accessing health care. There are also key issues in terms of education and workforce development that are very important to me. Uh, and certainly, I don't want to see our deficit expanded even more than it is now by having more unjust uh, Republican tax breaks. All very good issues. Lots of work that needs to be done there. Congressman Lloyd Doggett, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. We appreciate it. See you at home. Thank you.